So to just warm up ideas and start easy, I'd like to just talk about conceptually what would be the integral of the same function that we were dealing with earlier, f of x comma y equals x squared y, over um, a much nicer region than even this is. So I don't want to deal with that tilted line segment to start. How about we start with the following. So um, how about 1 to 8 on the x-axis, on the y-axis, we're only going to deal with the number 2. So that's that's we're just going to do that. If I draw this line segment, you know, back over here, we're just talking about that one. Okay. Uh, what I, what I drew in red. So we're going to take this, um, as, as capital C, right? So the integral of this function along this line segment, what should it be? It should be, now just stay with me here for a second. This should be the integral from 1 to 8 of x squared times 2 dx. So where did this x squared times 2 come from? That, look, the y-coordinate all along this line segment, sorry, let's draw that better, okay, along this completely horizontal line segment, the, the, y, the y value is always fixed to be 2. So x squared times 2, that's really uh, f of x comma 2. That's all I was doing here, right? Now, since f is continuous, I mean, just speaking about continuous informally, well, you know, the graph, you know, it's a surface, uh, does not suddenly jump in, in its height at any moment. But the, the another way to kind of informally talk about continuous would be if you just you plug in a certain x and y, and then you just slightly change x or y or both, just slightly, then the z coordinate shouldn't change by a lot, right? So since f is continuous, um, the integral, I'm trying to warm you up to the idea of what's going on with this line integral thing, the integral of the same function f, x squared y, over, and then I'm going to draw a picture, so 1, 8, uh, there's two again. I guess I'll get six in here. It doesn't really matter. Now I'm I'm going to connect one, uh, the, this point one two to the point eight two again, but not with a straight line segment. I'm going to connect a line seg, not quite even a line. It's not even a line segment. It just looks very similar to a line segment. It's going to be very wiggly, like that. So if we travel along here, the integral, uh, and now by the way, this integral you can just compute. Yeah. Integral from 1 to 8, 2x squared dx. Give that to your calc 1 friend. But the point is, the integral of this same function over this very, very similar shape. I mean, it, it just, it rides in the, the, the same places, right? So this should be approximately the same number. So we are trying to develop uh, 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 a thing called a line integral. Maybe it should have been called a curve integral. And that if you travel along this curve, that's almost like a straight line. It, you know, the, the the portion of geometry, the region of space occupied look is very similar. The, the number that we get for the integral should be close to the same. Now, let's then talk about something that is a little different, right? So let's go back to the thing we were looking at earlier. The integral over you know, integral of the same function, okay, x squared y over uh, back to the line segment, the tilted line segment we were looking at earlier. Okay, 1, 8 on the x-axis, 2, 6 on the y-axis from this point to that point. Okay, so, uh, and we tend to call the curve, and here I guess the curve is not very curvy, it's straight, but still, uh, that that's really a line or a line segment. Um, how do we do this? Right? How do we actually practically compute? Well, we'll get to practical computation in a second, but let's, to really understand what's going on in an integral, it's actually really helpful to look at Riemann sums, to approximate. So what I'd like to do is cut the line segment, cut this line segment here, this, this line segment, cut the line segment into, let's just say, five equal size pieces. We'll use n to represent the number of equal size pieces. We're going to use five as our example, equal sized pieces, uh, line segments. So let's blow up this picture. 
we'll draw this very carefully. So I have um, this point, got that point. If it's five equal sized pieces, there should be, let me count here, one, two, three, four, yeah. One, two, three, four dots drawn in the middle so that there's this piece and that piece and the third piece and the fourth piece and the fifth piece. Um, I, I went ahead and computed the coordinates of the points. This wouldn't be all too bad if, if you had to be forced to do, to do this, but I'll save you the pain of the arithmetic that this point here would be 2.4 comma 2.8. The next one here should be 3.8 uh, 3 comma 3.6. And then the next point here should be 5.2 comma 4.4. And the next one should be 6.6, 6, 5.2. I hope I did not make any errors in the arithmetic. Now, how did I know? How did I know these would be the numbers? If you're really curious, just parameterize the line segment from 1, 2 to 8, 6, right? And then, you know, this is what you get. So t equals 0, t equals 1. So what? This, sh this should be the point for when t is equal to 0 0.2. This is when t is 0 0.4, when t is 0 0.6, when t is 0 0.8. I mean, I won't go through all those details, but that's just where I got these specific numbers if you're really curious. Okay, now, um, for this line segment all along here, okay, um, there is a point that's like, let me maybe use another color right there. There happens to be a point whose coordinates happen to be 5.9 comma 4.8 okay then for that point what I'd like to do is compute the z value so f of 5.9 comma 4.8 well it's 5.9 comma squared times 4.8 yeah um, that's just you know going back and plugging into the to the function to get a height and then this distance here so this distance that's, let's call it delta S. And it's really just, um, I mean, you can just apply the Pythagorean theorem here to get the, the distance, right? I'm, I'm not going to bother, or the distance between this point and this point. Let's just get an approximation of this. It should be approximately 1.612 in this example. Now we're going to multiply the two. Multiply these two, these two numbers. multiply these two. Um, we should actually pick a point, you know, a red point in each interval. So maybe there and this one. I'm just, okay, we did this one and then, you know, so we, we, we're just trying to sample this and not, not do all of these because um, it's just, it'd be a lot to write out. So then what will we get? Well, I'm going to attempt to draw the following 3D picture. Okay, so if you multiply this height the z value together with this which is a width it's how long this line segment is think about what kind of shape we'd be getting by doing that yeah a width times a height that ought to be a rectangle right so i'm going to attempt to draw now x axis y axis z axis and then let's get in here uh, on the x axis we had one all the way up to eight on the y-axis, uh, two to six. There was this point. There was, let me just scroll down a little bit. Uh, no, I'm not gonna get those dots in here. It's gonna get messy. Anyway, these meet right down here at this point. Let me just erase those. It's just gonna get too messy. So we're traveling along this path, yeah? From this point here down to that point there. And then, the thing is, we are, we've cut this up into, see, there was one, two, three, four points in the middle. One, two, three, four points in the middle. That helped us create five equal sized pieces. One, two, three, four, five. In one of those pieces, what was it? In the fourth piece, there was this point, this xy value for which we found a height. And that height is going to be used all along. So in this piece, there's a there's a rectangle whose height maybe looks like let's try to make that a rectangle and then for this 
somewhere in here we needed to pick a point we just didn't do it uh, pick a point and then get a height so maybe something a, a rectangle that looks like uh, probably not quite like that but like maybe like this okay for this other interval as well that we should pick a, a height and then there as well and there as well so there's these five rectangles yeah so these five rectangles like let me shade one of these in blue maybe for alternating pattern let me shade the next one in red uh, there are the areas of these rectangles yeah so we're talking about the area of five rectangles and this is going to approximate this is approximately the value of the line integral it's what we're leading up to right now um, let's write down what that approximate area is so this thing here the area of the five integrals it is this this is this this air this area uh, it's, it's yeah this approximates that okay what we're leading up to so that area uh, notationally will be the sum I goes from 1 to 5 but more generally n um, f of x sub i star comma y sub i star so this is saying take a point that belongs to the um, to the ith line segment and then apply f to get the z value and then you've got to multiply that by the length of that ith piece so in our case all of these pieces here down here had the same length 